Today we're going to talk about how the preparation lays the foundation for success for all ceramic restorations. By this, I mean that the preparation is a key component of having lasting success. Many restorations, for example, a full gold crown, there's recommendations where I like to say for all ceramic restorations, these are requirements. Tra traditional ceramics like Lucite, Felspathic, brand names of Empress or Vita, or the traditional ceramics that you may get from your laboratory, they don't have a wiggle room for, for the laboratory to compensate for under preparation, for example. So we'll go over those guidelines and set the game plan for preparation success. This game plan will include traditional crown preparations, inlays, onlays, and veneers. For the purposes of this course, I'm not going to be talking about more untraditional restorations like what are commonly called crown lays or three-quarter crowns, which are traditional, but a lot of the all ceramic preparations that you may see people doing, and I often do myself, that don't fall under the traditional um, all ceramic preparation guidelines may be uncomfortable to some viewers, so we'll start off just talking about requirements and then going over more traditional preparations. When we are determining our preparation, we want to adhere to material needs. Again, like I stated, the traditional ceramics have strict requirements, and we want to keep that in account when we are making our preparations. We can often be more conservative while still re re fulfilling these requirements for materials and also bonding. Keeping in mind that bonding is a key component to preparation success and restoration success.